Hi everyone, it's Vanessa. I'm here to show you the books that I'm hoping to get to in February. Some of these are um, ones I've already started and I'm really enjoying so far. Some of them are ones that I need to do for my quarterly goals. I have to keep those in check. And then also I have some booktube prize books and I've kind of divided how it is that I'm going to be attempting to complete all of the booktube prize books because there's a lot of them and they're kind of big and not necessarily something that I would have been inclined to pick up on my own. So I definitely feel like I'm stepping a little bit out of my comfort zone and hopefully it's for the better. Like hopefully I find some new subgenres and nonfiction. So let's get started. Here is my February TBR. First, let's go through the things that I'm already listening to or reading. One of those and the one that I'm mostly focusing on at the moment is American Baby and it is a nonfiction book about the shadow history of adoption in the United States. This is mostly focusing on the post-World War II baby boom era. So kids born like in the 50s and 60s. It takes this one particular case of this one man who was adopted through this closed adoption sort of agency that basically forced unwed mothers, teenage mothers, to give up their children. It's this man's quest to find who were his parents. I always find post-World War II history like the most fascinating. The changes that this era brought to like creating teenagers as a category, you know, how much free time they had and what that did to kind of change the dynamic when it came to sex and how at the same time that there was no contraception or sex ed, people didn't even know how like babies happened or were born. It's really fascinating to me to see how those like changes in society come to a head. I love this kind of history. It's definitely the kind of history that I focused most on during my undergrad history degree in college. So I'm really enjoying it so far and the audiobook is great. Other than that, I'm currently listening to and also reading Everything Sad is Untrue and this is by Daniel Nayeri. So far so good. It's basically about a kid who moves. He's a refugee, I want to say, and he moves to Oklahoma. It's about like memories that he has from growing up. You can tell it's going to be emotionally touching and um, it won the prince this year, 2021. And then along the same lines, I have When You Trap a Tiger by Tay Keller already checked out from Libby and this is the one that won the Newberry for this year. I'm excited to try that one out. I know it has to do with Korean folktale. The other one that I already have checked out and that I want to get to this month for sure because I know I'm going to have to return the book is The X Talk by Rachel Lynn Solomon. I love this cover. I think it looks really fun. I want to read at least like one romance a month. Just something a little lighter just to keep myself entertained and not reading just depressing things all the time. I'm excited to see what I think. I know it has to do with a radio show. Let's talk a little bit about my goals, I guess. I've already told you about the Newberry ones and then the other goal that I had was to read short stories. So my two that I really want to get to this month is Daddy by Emma Klein and then Lot by Brian Washington. I've had these out for a while now and I just haven't picked them up. But again, short stories is the thing I'm focusing on or trying to focus on to see more of what it is, what is my speed when it comes to short stories. And then my third goal was to read mysteries. And I have two checked out, but the one I'm really going to be focusing on this month is A Murder is Announced by Agatha Christie. This is a Miss Marple mystery. I believe it's like a locked room mystery. A murder is announced and will take place on this date at this time and then people show up and want to know what's going on and then the lights go out. I'm excited to dive into the series. I've never read anything in this series. So these other books are just ones that I want to get to and um, I'm hoping that I will get to this month but they're not like top of the list priority but I hope to get to all of them. One of them is Braiding Sweetgrass by Robin Wall Kim Kimmerer and I have this one out on audiobook as well. There's a lot of holds for this book. Just thinking about the kinds of books that people in my library district read, I wouldn't necessarily think that this would have as many holds on it as it does because usually the nonfiction books that I check out at the library I can renew eight times and like nobody's ever on hold for them. But not for this book. Other people in my community want to read this one. I feel like nature writing is not my forte, is not the thing that I love in nonfiction, but it's definitely something that I want to try to dip my toes a little bit more into. Another one is the one that won the nonfiction award during the ALA Youth Media Awards this past two weeks, 
ago, one week ago, and it's The Rise and Fall of Charles Lindbergh by Candace Fleming. I have a co-worker who has not stopped talking about this book. She loved it so much. It's supposed to be like, exciting and um, compelling. Honestly, I don't know that much about Charles Lindbergh, so I'm hoping that this will teach me some as well. And then I have two graphic novels. One of them is one that I've shown before, and it's My Friend Dahmer by Derf Beckdorf. I want to read all of Derf Beckdorf's stuff and see if like he's a graphic novelist that I will really, really love or if I just loved Kent State because of the topic that he focused on. One thing is like, I don't love his illustration style, but usually if the story is really good, then the illustration style doesn't bother me as much. He kind of reminds me of like David Small, who I also don't love everything about his style, but I understand why it fits his stories. And the writing is always really good in David Small's books, so I'm hoping that I feel the same about Durf. And then the last one is one um, that I saw just walking around, and I just love Don Brown, so I picked up Fever Year, The Killer Flute of 1918 by him. This is a really short, juvenile graphic nonfiction. I love his style. That's it for my graphic nonfiction. I do have quite a few others, but those are the two that I really want to get to this month. And now let's talk about the three things that I hope to either get to and finish or start and then finish next month for the booktube prize. I had to do some research as to like what is the timeline of the booktube prize. I feel a little bit like I bit more than I could chew, is that the phrase? I don't know how this is gonna go basically and I'm a little bit not nervous but I feel like I don't want to let the booktube prize down so anyway my booktube prize plan of attack is now settled and <laughs> I tried to organize to see like where I could get the audiobooks from if I could get the books or you know if there's a wait list for some of them how long the audiobooks are how long the books are just so I could plan out my months so I wouldn't be reading all of the long books at the same time or all of the short books at the same time and to have a good balance I think um, and to also think about like realistically how much do I need to push myself this month I am going to attempt to read three this month and three next month so the first one that I want to read and I already have downloaded on audiobook is Black Wave this is by Kim Hattas she is from Lebanon originally and this is looking into religious history and how culture and religion has affected the Middle East. It's supposed to be a really immersive and it's not supposed to be dry, which is what I am most anticipating and hoping for um, because this, again, it's not a topic that I would ever really just pick up on my own. I think I would say there's two on the list that I would have picked up without the booktube prize. This is one of them. This is Milltown, Reckoning with What Remains by Carrie Arsenault. It talks about her growing up around a paper mill basically and how that drove all of the economy for the town and then thinking about what that meant to the environment, you know, how this town has hurt the environment as a result of this factory. It seems like we'll talk about like small town America and changing economics and things like that, which I find interesting. This one is available on audiobook too and it's ready to go. And then the last one is the biggest one for my um, round and it is Fevers, Feuds, and Diamonds, Ebola and the Ravages of History by Paul Farmer. This is ginormous. It's like 500-ish pages of normal text. This one is also available from audio on audiobook and it's 22 hours long. This is one that may be I won't finish in February, but I will definitely start because I just know it's the longest one and that might be hard for me at times, especially again, not a topic that I think I would ever pick up. I think that I will connect with it because, you know, thinking about pandemics and thinking about epidemics in general and diseases, I think that will connect with what we're living through right now. We'll see how this one goes. And that is it for my February TBR. Things that I'm hoping to get to this month. There's definitely a lot more that I have checked out, so we'll see what ends up actually being read. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you've read any of these, please let me know in the comments, or if you would like to read any of these, also let me know in the comments. I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.